Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Houston's 3D Prints. Today I'm going to be covering the G-code information um, along with some other useful things that I think are important to share with you uh, in regards to the 3D Chameleon on the K1 slash K1 Max 3D printers. Uh, I'm going to be using a slightly different version of Bill's profile. Um, I've changed a couple of things to fit for my printer, so I'm just going to show you guys some things that might be useful to change on yours. Um, the first thing you'll definitely want to do is make sure you download the Prusa profile from the uh, link on printables for the K1. And then obviously you want to open up Prusa and import that uh, profile. Mine has been changed like I said, so I'm not going to import it because I want to just keep things how they are. Um, but for video's sake, uh, I'll kind of go over the basics of what you would expect. So when you first import the profile into Pr Prusa, You'll get like a test print to try out, and then you'll have a couple things here. It'll just kind of show you um, the color changes and how that is set up on there. Some important things I did want to cover are going to be under the printer settings tab. Uh, the first thing is if you are using a K1 Max, then you're going to need to change a few things. Um, that being the print height, along with setting your bed shape. It's as simple as just changing the uh, the dimensions to fit yours um, and that's basically about the only difference as far as I'm aware um, I think it's pretty much really all you need to change for that so as far as how the g-code works and where the g-code is that's going to be under the printer settings tab and then under the custom g-code tab you'll notice here you'll have three different tabs you'll have the start g-code that's all pretty straightforward really but start g-code basically tells the printer um, the initial steps that it needs to do with 3D Chameleon. You'll have the end G code, which tells the 3D Chameleon basically how to end, and your tool change G code, which is what changes the colors in between. Full important things you'll need to note in here. Uh, you'll notice in here that it has the edit this line to set the initial location of the button. This is going to be the switch that's going to be inside the printer. Um, to find these coordinates, you're going to have to make sure that you manually move the tool head to the switch, switch location. Um, you'll notice on the back of the tool head that there's these like square extruded bumps. And you'll want to make sure that one of those is engaging with the actual button. If you don't have that engaging with the button, then you may have issues where it doesn't consistently press. Uh, so it's really important to make sure that you have that there. And then... In order to find the proper position, uh, you'll want to make sure that you have the bump pressing the switch within one millimeter. What I mean by that is essentially you want to make sure that if you back off a millimeter, the light goes off on the switch. And if you go on a millimeter, the light turns on. You want to make sure that it's that fine tuned because otherwise you may have issues where it'll move too much and then it'll engage a switch when you don't need it to or vice versa. Um, so it's really important that you fine tune that. Uh, it's as simple as just you know manually moving the switch around. Uh, I like to use the GUI interface to just like go millimeter by millimeter uh, to get that exact position. And then once you have that number, you should have your X and Y. So for example, mine is set at X209, Y216. Something that's really important to note here is the Y is going to be minus 3 from what you have your set at. So for example, mine is Y219 on the actual printer, but because of how this G-code works, it essentially knows to hover in front of the switch, negative 3. So therefore, instead of 219, mine's 216. And this is really important because uh, how the G-code is set up is essentially it tells the tool head to go 3 millimeters before the actual switch press hover there, and then it moves forward three to press the switch, and then back three to be off the switch. So it's really important to make sure you have that. So again, mine's 219 on the actual printer to press the button, but 216 is where you want to set it in the G-code. There's going to be three spots where you want to edit this. It's going to be in the start G-code where it says load filament one. It'll also be in the end G-code here where it says edit this line to set the initial switch location. And then you'll also want to make sure you change that here in the tool change G-code. And it says the same exact thing. Yours may be different, so you're going to have to play around with it a little bit to get that number. Um, this is what mine was at, so it's just, you know, 
how it is. And then as far as the timing goes, I've had people asking me about how to change the timing, whether it's feeding into the extruder or re retracting out from the extruder. So you'll notice here where it says, adjust this E-value to tune extruder loading. So the E-value is essentially how much the extruder is pulling the filament in. And there's also this P-value above that. This is the timing from essentially the Y splitter, the, right before the Y splitter, how far it feeds to the extruder. It's really important that you take into consideration when changing this number, the E step value, um, because if you, for example, need it to be 23 seconds, and in order to measure this, you essentially go, you have the filament one inch from the Y splitter, so it's gonna be coming out of the chameleon and it's gonna sit one inch right before the Y splitter and you'll want to count the seconds it takes to get from there to the extruder and then calculating also adding in the extruder value. So for example, if you need it to be at 23 seconds, you would simply just change this to from 28 to 23, but it's important to keep in, in consideration with the ESEPS value because say you need it to be at 23 seconds, but in reality it's actually extruding more than you need it to or retracting it more than you need to, it's because this wasn't considered into that. So you kind of have to fine tune it a little bit. Um, I don't have an exact like equation to getting this proper. I've kind of just changed it every print and then just fine tuned it until I found a good spot. Um, the 28,000 is actually the default uh, for the profile. I haven't, I did change this, but I changed it back. I actually found this to probably be the best so far for me. Uh, yours may be different depending on how long your potent tubes are. So that's something to consider. Um, if you do change this number, just make sure that you change it in each corresponding uh, section. So I believe that also is, yeah. So it's also going to be in the star G code. Yeah, so it's if you change the feeding time, then it's going to be the same in the tool change G code along with the star G code. And that's for feeding into the extruder. Now, the main problem that I had was when it pulled out of the extruder and it would pull too much filament out and it would cause the filament to either not feed back through or it would just completely come out of the uh, chameleon system. So obviously that's not ideal because then colors aren't going to change properly and you're going to have some problems with that. It took me a bit to find this, but it was pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't know how I ended up missing this, but... It's going to be this value here, uh, continue to back out of the extruder, and the, P, the P10,000 is what mine's set to. Uh, so again, it's something you need to take in consideration is the extruder value. Uh, as you can see, it's moving out minus 75, I think it's like millimeters per second, and then my P value is set to 10,000. Depending on your Bowden tube length, yours may be different. I found this to be good for my setup. So if your setup's similar to mine, and this number might work, um, again, you're going to have to kind of fine tune this to get the proper timing. Uh, you'll want to make sure essentially though, that when it pulls the filament back out, that it's about an inch from the splitter. That would be ideal. It can go a little bit further. Um, you just don't want to go too far because otherwise it's not going to feed back through properly and it's going to throw everything off. Uh, this G code section is going to be in the tool change G code along with the NG code as you can see here um, and here's an example of the button moving forward three and then back three that's why it's really important that you have the switch set at that minus three from what it's actually set at on your printer just an example of that so you get an idea um, and then it's pretty straightforward as far as that goes I mean it, Again, taking consideration the extruder value plus the timing, that's pretty much how you adjust that. Um, I have all of my tip shaping method pretty much default to whatever was already set in the slicer or the profile that was included. Um, that's basically all that I have changed so far was just getting the proper timing. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it really. Um, as far as setting up a print goes, it's 
pretty standard. If you use Prusa before, then it's you know it's pretty obvious how to do it. Um, for those that haven't used Prusa before, it's really easy. Um, when you import a, a file that you want to print, some of them come separated out for multi-material printing. Uh, you may get this little pop-up here. If you want it to be separate pieces, then you want to hit no, and that'll essentially lay it out individual pieces along the build plate. If you hit yes, it'll combine them, and then it'll give you something similar to this. I really like when prints or files are set up like this because it's really easy just to change the colors. So like for example, we'll change this to white real quick, and then you'll see, boom, nice little uh, Pac-Man goes there. Uh, and it's really as simple as that. But yeah, hopefully that helps uh, cover any questions that people have had. Uh, like I said, this is a really basic video, just kind of showing the example of how it works and what it does. If anyone has any questions or, you know, I may have missed something that needed a little bit of better explanation, feel free to comment below and I'll try to get back to you. And uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one. Bye.